Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm John. I strolled into the room with hesitation. My grandma cried out loud when she saw me. Honey, you look amazing. I knew this skirt would look good on you, but I didn't expect it to look this good, she said. I replied, are you being serious, Grandma? I could never imagine myself in a skirt before. I wish I could wear this at home, but my parents would never let me. She smiled. <laughs> Honey, you can wear anything you want once you're 18. You can leave your skirt here and wear it when you visit me, she said. The following week was my birthday. My grandma gave me a wonderful present. This skirt meant a lot to me because my parents only let me wear pants. For the first time in my life, I owned a skirt, thanks to my grandma. By the way, you may be wondering why my name is John. There's a ridiculous story behind that. While my mom was pregnant, she had a dream that she gave birth to a baby boy. The following night, my dad had the same dream as well. He woke my mom up and told her about it. This can't be a coincidence. It must be real. We're having a boy, she said, embracing him. After that, they prepared everything for their baby boy. They furnished the baby's room with blue furniture. They got me boy's clothes and toys. After giving it a lot of thought, they decided to name their boy, I mean me, John. When I was born, they were shocked. Disappointed, my parents brought me home. My dad said, oh, we got so excited to have a baby boy. Well, let's not make a big fuss about this now. We'll figure it out later. As I grew up, I began to question their ridiculous decision. I kept asking, why did you give me a boy's name? Why am I only allowed to wear pants? My dad would say, you should thank us. Girls are weak, but you are not because we raised you like a boy. Trying to convince me that what they were doing was better. I disagreed with him. Boys were not superior to girls. No matter what I said, I couldn't convince my parents. My grandma, on the other hand, would always encourage me. We lived in the same neighborhood. I'd go and have breakfast with her every morning. Her jams were terrific. She would make me a fried egg and jam on toast. Every morning we would have a blast. Then I'd go to school. We always celebrate birthdays with family. Our only guest would be my grandma. But my dad told me this year, John, don't invite your grandma. When I asked him why, he said, we've been having some issues lately. I, I don't want to see her. I was upset. Dad, she's your mom. Why don't you want to see her? I know you want to sell her house. She has a right to say no. That house is all she has. She's not in a position to rent, I said. He replied, it's because I have a wonderful business idea and need the money right now. Your grandma needs to sell the house. Dad, none of your business ideas take off. You opened a florist's shop and that flopped. Coffee shop, flopped. The pizza spot, flopped. You sold off our car, our house, everything. Please don't touch grandma's house, I said, begging him to stop pushing. He wouldn't listen. I'm opening a pet store this time. It can't fail, he said, dismissing me. A few weeks passed. One morning, I went to my grandma's house, and she looked so sad. She told me, your dad sold the house yesterday. I couldn't say no because he was so adamant. I need to move out at the end of the month, but I don't have money to rent another place. I don't know what to do. Also, also, she stopped right there and began crying faintly. Also, what, grandma? Please tell me, I said. My grandma took a deep breath. For some time now, I haven't been able to sleep at night. I get palpitations. It's hard for me to breathe. I went to see a specialist and they said I have an arrhythmia in my heart. They need to put a pacemaker in me, but it's such an expensive procedure. I asked your dad for a loan, but he wouldn't give it to me. I was enraged. Grandma, my dad sold your house. That money is already yours. He has to give you the money you need. I ran home. My dad had spread the money on the dining table. He was counting it with my mom's help. I broke down in tears and said to him, Grandma needs a pacemaker. Dad, you are going to fail and lose all that money. I beg you, please, please give Grandma the money she needs while you still have it. My mom said, John, don't be ridiculous. Your dad's going to make it this time. Your grandma is an older woman. It's normal for her to have health issues. She needs to get used to things like this, right, honey? My dad said, uh, that's very true. My mom's well over 70. A pacemaker's just the beginning. She'll have many more health issues in the future. Instead of coming to terms with her declining health, she's asking us for money. I was so mad that I went to my room. Talking things through with my parents wasn't the way to do this. I had to deal with it myself. But how? No matter how hard I thought, I couldn't come up with a solution. 
The following day, when I went to my grandma's for breakfast, she looked exhausted. After finishing my egg, I started on the jam and toast. It tasted genuinely unique. Suddenly, I had a light bulb go off in my head. Grandma, what's this jam? I asked. She picked up the jar and showed me. Blueberry and lemon. Do you like it? She said. Like it? I love it. (laughs) And what was the one that I had yesterday? I asked, and she pointed to another jar. Kiwi and strawberry. I think combining two fruits makes a better jam, she said. I agree. I screamed with joy. Then I explained to my grandma my first business idea ever. I was going to sell her delicious jams in the farmer's market. I thought of a brand name as well, Girl Power. My grandma loved the idea. She stayed up that night to make 10 different kinds of jam. We poured all of it into jars. I decorated the jars with Girl Power stickers printed from my printer. After I put ribbons on each jar lid, our products were ready. We had a farmer's market near where we lived. I put on my skirt, opened a small booth, and started selling our jams. Unfortunately, they didn't get much attention. I was only able to sell four jars all day. People were saying, don't you have strawberry jam? They weren't sure they'd like our blend because it was unusual. I said to myself, come on, girl power. Show me what you got. You need to crack this. I thought about it for a week and finally found a solution. There was only one way to convince people. They had to try the jams. I served small bowls of jam and tiny slices of bread on my table. People who tasted the jams loved them. I sold 45 jars the day I started implementing this new strategy. I was staying with grandma. I sent my parents a photo of myself working at the booth. I wrote, your daughter is an entrepreneur now. You can be proud. My dad replied, John, what's up with that skirt? You need to wear pants. Looking like a girl makes you weak. As a response, I just sent him a photo of one of my jars. It said girl power on it. When we made enough money, we went to the best cardiologist in town and got a pacemaker implanted in my grandma's heart. While she was in the hospital, I rented us a new place. My grandma had to move out of her house. It was tough for her to leave the home she had shared with my grandpa for years, but at least we now had enough income to afford rent. In the following months, things took off for us. I had a customer who was buying from me regularly. How about scaling this business? We could start a factory and sell girl power jams in stores all over the country, he said. I said yes without (laughs) hesitation. Mr. Redford and I became partners, and he did everything he promised. I became a millionaire. It was time to surprise my grandma. One morning, I told her, I want to show you something. I'm curious to see if you'd like it. We got into the luxury car waiting for us and started driving. I asked my grandma to close her eyes. The car stopped. Holding her hand, I led her out of the car and asked her to open her eyes. She was so surprised to see her own house. I bought it back from the person my dad sold it to and did a complete renovation. From now on, we're going to live here. You can cherish grandpa's memory as long as you want, I said to her. She started crying as she hugged me. We moved into the house without delay. One day, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, my parents were standing outside. John, my business failed and it was your fault. It would help if you covered my loss right now. Dad, how about a hello first? Can you also tell me how I could have hurt your business? I haven't seen you in almost a year, I said. Your dad was this close to making it this time, but he lost confidence because you told him he would fail again. (gasps) Opening a pet store was a great idea, but it failed because of you. My mom screamed. Mom, Dad, there's a pet store on every corner. You just opened another one. It's no surprise that it failed. I'm not responsible for that. You are, I responded. (gasps) Since you're rich now, you can compensate for the loss you caused. Actually, no, double the amount I lost. We raised you like a boy. You owe us every single penny that you made. You would never be successful if you acted like a girl. My dad almost growled. Dad... I made all this with my girl power. I can see that you're jealous of me. There's nothing you can do. You are a man, yet you can't make it. I'm a girl. (laughs) And I did, I said with a smirk. My attitude drove him mad. My grandma heard the commotion and came over to the door. My dad said, Mommy, it's so lovely to see you. I have a great idea, but we need money for it, so we should sell the house again. What do you think, Mama? My grandma was so mad that she roared. How dare you? Have you people no shame? Leave my house now and don't you ever come 
back. My parents were incredibly upset after that. They started yelling at us. So I had to call the security guards to lead them out. I haven't seen my parents since then, but I'm sure every time they go to the grocery store and see our girl power jams, they're green with jealousy. I like thinking about that a lot.